Hi, I'm William. I'm going to show you how to make uh, this harness with female spade connectors. The original manufacturer used black for both. You don't want to overheat it to know what you're doing and uh, it's important that uh, the customers appreciate your work. So always do a good job. This uh, wire that we have here is actually the wire that provides uh, the positive and the negative to our relay on the hydraulic motor. This is the one that was actually cut between the box. We're going to make two new uh, wires with connectors and we're going to loom them and we're going to heat shrink them as well so uh, to make sure that they're well sealed. Even though it's a small piece of loom, a uh, small piece of wiring, it still needs to look uh, and represent a, a job well done. So to make this wire, what I did is I brought a 16 gauge, okay, and I'm gonna use a, a red, and I'm also for the power, and I'm going to use the black 16 gauge for the, uh, for the negative. Okay, we're also going to uh, have these blue um, spade connectors. Okay, these are the female type for the end of our wire. So we're gonna use a little bit of heat shrink as well. Okay, and this is the type that's sealable. And uh, we're gonna cut this in two and we're going to apply it to the end of our uh, spade connectors. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm just gonna use my uh, crimping pliers and uh, side cutters. I have my, uh, my knife as well. And to uh, finish everything off, Give it a professional look. I brought some loom with me as well. And lastly, our butane heating torch, okay? This torch can also be used for soldering, heating, pack it anywhere, take it with you. So first we gotta cut the wires 16 gauge wire, uh, like I said, I decided to use the red and the black just to show positive and negative. The original manufacturer used black for both, okay? Uh, some manufacturers will do that. I'm just gonna get a, a measurement of how, how much wire we need. We're gonna cut them a little bit longer, okay, than the original. We're probably gonna go about uh, six inches over, okay? So we're probably looking at about here. Then we're going to just remove the end. Now there's a, uh, a proper um, splicing tool that you can get, okay? But me, I got used to using uh, just my side cutters. They actually have a nice sharp edge to them. So when I, when I actually cut into the insulation, I'm not actually cutting through it. I'm just kind of uh, wearing it in a little bit, okay? I'm not tightening it and then I just pull it off. We're removing probably about three quarters of, uh, yeah, it's probably, we probably don't need that much, but uh, about half an inch, three quarter of an inch. Get our spade connectors. Okay, yeah, they're a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off. Like that. Okay, so once you put them in place, take your crimpers. Make sure you have the right size of crimper. You just squeeze it. Okay. Just give them a little pull, make sure they're nice and tight. So as the other one. Our positive wire, we're going to cut this one a little bit too. Just like that. Put our spade connector in place. Okay. We're going to use our crimpers. You'll notice our crimpers, it has uh, two different sizes. Okay. We're going to use a smaller one. And we're going to crimp it. Give it a little tug, move it around. Make sure that there's no movement in between 
the wire and the spade connector. After cutting the heat shrink, okay, just so to make sure that our connector doesn't uh, short out to any other uh, to ground or or to positive, what I did is I put I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink around the outside of the spade connector with my little butane torch. I'm just going to heat it so that it squeezes up against the spade connector. So you can probably see it as it's shrinking. Okay, looks nice and clean and it's going to make sure that if anything touches there it won't short out. So it serves like a little insulator. And I'm going to do the same with the positive wire. Okay, so you'll see how it's going to shrink as I apply the heat. Now you got to make sure you don't apply too much heat because uh, this heat shrink actually comes with the sealant, in, internal sealant. So if you heat it too much, it'll melt and it could uh, create issues for you because it acts as an insulator as well. So on the end, you just heat it up a little bit so that it shrinks and that's it. Towards the back, you can heat it up a little more until you see the little goo come out. Okay, it's a little sealant that's in there. You don't want to overheat it. Uh, you can definitely use a lighter in case you don't have one of these torches. When I was in the field, uh, a lighter was actually a tool of choice. Okay, if you don't have one of those little ones. Sometimes they're a little bit expensive, uh, but you can probably find them for about uh, $60, $70. And so the loom doesn't uh, move around on the wire, or the wire doesn't move around the loom. You just cut a little piece of tape. Put it in there, just like that. Okay. And this loom is actually split. Okay. So just stick it in there. Okay. The tape that's remaining, okay, all you do is you just wrap it around like that. Okay. And that prevents it from sliding. Okay. So it doesn't slide, your wire doesn't slide inside the, uh, the loom. So it keeps it in place. Okay, and then you just, because the loom is split, you just push it in. So the benefits of uh, using this loom uh, are actually uh, your wires won't be just hanging, okay? It's just like we saw before. At the same time, uh, it pr protects the wire from uh, any scuffing or uh, rubbing. Remember this uh, truck is driving around, it's mobile, so there's always movement in there. So you don't want these wires uh, rubbing on the box or anything external because in the end it could uh, short out, okay? It could uh, short out to ground and you could have created another issue. So this loom actually protects the wire from that. So all we do is you cut it off to length. Just like that and there we go we're ready to connect uh, I haven't uh, taken stri stripped the wire off the ends yet because I may have to just cut it a little bit shorter once I put it in place okay now uh, the final part will be the mounting of it and we want to make sure that uh, it's secured mounted properly okay and we want to make sure that uh, whatever job you do always looks professional and it's done proper so you can see that uh, even though it's a small piece of loom a uh, small piece of wiring it still needs to look uh, and represent a, a job well done okay so these clamps help the uh, that wiring job uh, just look professional uh, you mount it so that it doesn't get caught on anything this wire is actually going at the top part of the crane and we don't want it to get caught anywhere rub or just be bouncing around so uh, the clamps will help to support it. That's what it should look like. You know, you want to make your job look professional. Uh, you want to appear to uh, to know what you're doing. And uh, it's important that uh, the customers appreciate your work. So always do a good job. Have pride in your work. Here uh, you see the harness that came off of the crane and the one that's going on the crane. You can tell that uh, the person that actually knows what he's doing and also has pride in his work. So, If you like this video and you want to see more of them, just subscribe, like and also uh, just leave your comments on the video.